Let's go! Scott Linehan is out. The LSU passing game coordinator just after one year. The follow-up to the great Joe Brady is gone. Also, I get so sick and tired of postseason awards. Like, for real, this is the second straight year something absolutely crazy has happened to the LSU secondary. And I'm fired up about it because there is a simple fix. A simple fix. So go on ahead Subscribe to the channel. We are booming right now. Let's get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of the week. Let's go. Scott Linehan out after just one year. This guy wasn't even the offensive coordinator, and he was getting paid $800,000 a year. Brooks Cabuena broke this story. As Brooks points out that a good chunk of the LSU defensive staff is gone, we did our Bo Pelini video yesterday. It's already our most watched video ever. And Bill Bush is also out. I'm going to give you who I think LSU is going to replace Scott Linehan with in just a second. But first, uh, this is one of my favorite LSU websites. I have a lot of friends that have written here, written at the site over the years. Uh, Zachary Junda of andthevalleyshook.com. So shout out to my friends uh, Posure and, and Podcat. This is a really good write-up right here. And as you can see here, he goes into details about what Scott Linehan was brought in here to do. Okay? The third down and red zone specialist for LSU, which was the Joe Brady role last year, LSU struggled 102nd in third down conversions and 104th in red zone touchdown percentage. And I agree with Zachary in this next paragraph. Some of the struggles is not on Linehan. First-year quarterback Miles Brennan gets hurt after three games. And then after that, you know, we're rotating doors at quarterback. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're playing a lot of freshmen. Scott Linehan, something that's important on third down, whether it's pass protection or short yardage. You need a great offensive line, unless you didn't have a great offensive line, or you need a really bad dude at running back that could run people over. Well, LSU didn't have the best running back group that they've ever had. So, you know, and a lot of you are going to say, well, that Ty Davis Price, and they're all talented, but this wasn't a Clyde Edwards Hilaire or a Jeremy Hill type of back. So, all those things really hurt Scott Linehan, especially considering all the backs that LSU had this year, none of them were great receivers out of the backfield. So all those things really hurt LSU. But as Zachary points out here, the Linehan era can be surmised in one sequence. LSU failing to score from the one against Missouri with the game on the line, and I couldn't agree more. In fact, one of our first big film studies was on the four plays at the one-yard line. I tore LSU apart with Linehan's decision-making there. I'll put a link down below on my thoughts on that entire sequence. And, you know, you can't really blame freshmen or anything like that because that was the last game where our starting offense was fully healthy. We still had Miles Brennan. We still had Terrace. Eric Gilbert went absolutely crazy in that game. And with all due respects to, to Linehan, Torrey Carter did drop a touchdown. LSU did have to burn a lot of timeouts. They did burn one on defense. But ultimately, Scott Linehan's getting paid nearly a million dollars a year to figure out what to do there. We ran two simple runs that didn't work. Then we tried two passes to Terrace that didn't work. It's a problem. So, what is LSU going to do to replace Linan? Well, obviously, this is a photo of the great Joe Brady. He's not coming back. I know a lot of you have sent me messages. Hey, is Joe not happy with the Carolina Panthers? Trust me, when you get an offensive coordinator job at the NFL, just ask Scott Linehan. He was a OC for 13 years in the league. Those jobs are really hard to get. So, even if Joe Brady... Is not totally happy with the situation in Carolina with Teddy Bridgewater and Matt Rule. He's going to stick it out with that job. 
uh, unless, of course, he is leaving for a head coaching job. A lot of people say Joe Brady is going to be the next uh, coach for the the uh, crap. Scott McVay uh, for the Rams, or Sean McVay of the Rams, the next young head coach. So we shall see what happens there. So who should replace Joe Brady. Well, the first thing I want to point out is Scott Woodward, the athletic director, has leaked this out that LSU is in extreme cost-cutting measures right now. So what that essentially means is while LSU is paying out all these buyouts to fire all these coaches, they don't necessarily have the deepest pocketbook to hire new coaches, which obviously is going to hamstring Ed Orgeron as he tries to rebuild this coaching staff. So one option is that LSU might not even replace a passing game coordinator. A lot of offenses don't even have that title. They just have an offensive coordinator, a defensive coordinator, assistants, and and head coaches. They don't have a passing game coordinator. But I do think LSU will fill the role, and I believe This is the guy that's going to do it. He's been at LSU for a year, and his name is Russ Calloway. And one way I I could feel Russ Calloway being that guy is whenever he first came in, I I had sources telling me that he's going to eventually be the Joe Brady. They wanted to get a more established guy, uh, and they wanted to see what Russ Calloway was all about. Well, he's already blown away coaches with his ability to relate with the players. And I had one source tell me that Russ Calloway is a very innovative mind. Here's something to keep in mind as well. And this is a story from Shay Dixon of 247 Sports. After Miles Brennan struggled versus Mississippi State, and we talked about this when Miles Brennan had his struggles versus the Bulldogs, It was Russ Calloway who did a lot of work with the quarterbacks to teach them how to step up into the pocket, and that was something Miles Brennan didn't do in his first game, but he did better versus Vanderbilt. He did better versus uh, Missouri. We did a Vanderbilt film study showing the adjustments that Miles Brennan made as far as stepping up into the pocket, so um, that was a lot of Russ Calloway, and like I always say, when you watch a broadcast when you watch the game at first just watch the game but then whenever you watch a replay of the game notice everything that is around the game if you look really closely Max Johnson has a very good relationship with Russ Calloway we saw them dancing together in the locker room after the Florida win and I saw those two uh, co-mingling on the sideline after big plays so I think Uh, The cost-cutting, if you want to factor in cost-cutting, if you want to factor in in in-house decision-making, I would strongly believe Russ Calloway, this guy right here, is going to be your next passing game coordinator at LSU. Something else to keep in mind is, what about Steve Insminger? Is he going to come back? So before you make a decision at passing game coordinator, you got to figure out, well, is LSU even going to have their offensive coordinator back? And I've said it plenty of times. I think Steve is actually pretty good. Um, he was dealt a, a pretty tough hand this year having to call plays for three different quarterbacks, which is the first time that's happened since, I believe, 2008. I think that was the last time LSU had to start three different quarterbacks and a patchwork off its line. And like I said, a big part of the LSU offense last year was Clyde Edwards-Hilaire catching the football out of the backfield. As you saw this year, LSU had struggled connecting to all their backs out of the backfield. So that that was just a, a simple problem that just could never get fixed. So Steve Ensminger, who personally has, has dealt with a lot of tragedy in his life, I would not be surprised if the slinger hangs it up. Uh, I... Number one, I think he's just a good dude. I think he's a team-first guy. I think he's a guy that LSU would like to have back on staff. Ed Orgeron is fiercely loyal to him. Now, something that fires me up, and it's such a simple fix. Uh, So, as you can see here, LSU had two first-team 
all SEC performers, Cade York, who obviously deserved it, but Derek Stingley? What? And I love Derek Stingley. When he's healthy, he's the best corner in college football. But this year? Are you kidding me? And I know I'm supposed to be positive when my Tigers have awards, but really? Do people that vote on this actually watch the games? Second team All-SEC, Ali Gay, Zach Van Rosenberg, and then our freshman All-SEC performers. It's hard to argue against any of these. Eric Gilbert, even though he sat out the last two games, I've, I've shared the stat a lot. He set a true freshman reception record in the SEC. Kayshawn Butte, obviously B.J. Ojolari, and Elias Ricks should have been the first team all-corner over Derek Stingley Jr. And we'll just float through uh, the first team really quickly. And obviously these are the players of the year, Devonta Smith, Patrick Sertan, we continue here. First team offense, Kyle Pitts, obviously the offensive lineman, but uh, you see here Mac Jones got it over Kyle Trask. I'm not so sure if I agree with that. And then obviously, you know, you take a look at the defense. Patrick Sertan was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year, but then you see Derek Stingley Jr. And then you go to second-team offense, hard to argue Jalen Wertemeyer, after Kyle Pitts, uh, Traylon Burks is phenomenal. But you continue, uh, continue here, and there's Zach Van Rosenberg, and then you see all the SEC players right there. But once again, this is not hard to do, okay? This took two steps. Before you vote for someone for all SEC, just check to see if the player actually played a majority of the games. And Derek Stingley Jr. played seven games this year. Seven of the ten games. And he was still first-team All-SEC over a guy who led the conference in interceptions. Really? Also, Catalan should have been first-team. But nevertheless, really? He played seven games. And, oh, yeah, the Arkansas game, he got hurt. He only played the first half of the Arkansas game where we gave up five throws of over 20 yards on five attempts. The Auburn game, Seth Williams, for the most part, got the better of him outside of forcing the fumble at the one-yard line. The Missouri game, he got hurt. We still got torched through the air. I mean, just watch the games. The Alabama game was another rough game for our secondary. Texas A&M, he was unreal good in that game. He was unreal good in the Vanderbilt game. And in the South Carolina game, the guy opposite him had a pick six in the game. But he was really good in the South Carolina game overall. But he wasn't first team all SEC good. It's simple. Just go look at the game log before you place a vote. It is not hard to do. The same thing happened last year with Grant Delpit, okay? As much as you want to make fun of Jacoby Stevens this year, Jacoby Stevens was the better safety than Grant Delpit last year. And obviously the two years prior, Grant Delpit was the best safety in the SEC, period. But obviously Grant Delpit was playing through injury and he regressed last year. And Derek Stingley was the three-time SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, I said Derek Stingley, uh, Jacoby Stevens. And Grant Delpit won the Thorpe Award last year when there was three other defensive backs in the secondary that were better than him. So the award show and, and postseason awards, when it comes to defensive backs, obviously you don't really see defensive back play. Sometimes really good defensive back play is when they don't throw to your side at all. So it's kind of hard to just vote defensive backs, but you cannot have this happen and it be taken seriously. Okay, And this isn't a shot at Derek Stingley Jr., but you are robbing Elias Ricks of first-team All-ACC. And I know he was first-team All-Freshman. 
but he was the best corner in the SEC. I think he was even better than Patrick Sertan, if, especially if you factor in pick sixes, which Elias Ricks had a lot of them. So, you know, I, I, I it's it blows my mind that this continues to happen. Comment below your thoughts on this video. Of course, you know, uh, the live streams Tuesday nights at 7. Your comments have been fantastic. It's power, power. LSU, boom. By the way, I'm doing some ESPN radio work. Uh, if you want to know about my schedule on that, just hit me up. 